Welcome to the Horizon Newscast for the week of March 19, 2012. I'm Morgan Tedesco. On March 2nd, the region's most destructive tornado in nearly 40 years tore through southern Indiana, leaving a path of debris and fatalities. Many survivors have lost everything, their homes included. Bella Portero visited one of the nearby cities affected by the tornadoes to find out what IU Southeast can do to help. With cleanup underway, relief efforts for this community are coming from across the nation. IE Southeast students have various opportunities to do their part in helping Henryville. As the emergency alert signals were activated, people across the region rushed to seek shelter from what was projected to be deadly tornadoes by national meteorologists. Henryville, Marysville, and other cities in the area were some of the places that were hit the hardest by severe weather. The National Weather Service says two tornadoes hit this area. One of them was rated an EF4 that carried winds of 175 miles per hour. Officials say that the first devastating tornado was on the ground for 52 miles and measured more than 150 yards wide. This storm impacted both Marysville and Henryville. IE Southeast student Cecilia Hunt's family's home was one of the few homes that was not completely destroyed by the tornado in Marysville, Indiana. She told us about her mother's experience that day. Um, so I called and made sure that she was somewhere safe and she said that her and the two dogs were in the bathroom because that's where we go whenever we have a storm. Um, so I hung up with her because it was about to hit and then right afterwards I called her back to make sure she was okay and whenever she answered she was just screaming. She's like, it hit, it hit. And Hunt's family home is located on Marysville Road. The day we went to interview the family, there were electric lines on the ground preventing us from getting to their home. Cecilia Hunt's mother, Helen Hunt, was available for a phone interview instead. So I got the two dogs at my comforter and my pillow and we got in the bathroom, the electric went off, and then um, in a matter of seconds, it seemed like long, but in a matter of seconds, then the freight train kind of like it was going through my house. The Hunt family feels they are fortunate to not have lost their home as so many of their friends and neighbors did. They all said they don't understand why they were spared when so many others were not. You hear on the news they say don't don't just go out there, they want it to be organized, which is true, but at the same time I think if you know somebody out there, like I've had a lot of friends ask and there's no reason to turn down help because everybody out there needs help. Though cleanup efforts are underway with volunteers, Helen Hunt is nervous that they may be forgotten about in just a few weeks or months. We're, we're going to need help out here for, for quite a while. We are going to need, I mean, there are so many properties that were damaged and, you know, once they get the initial debris removed, there's going to be so much more for people to do, and, and I hope people don't forget about us in a couple of days. IU Southeast students have various opportunities to volunteer to help Marysville, Henryville, and affected areas. IU Southeast is collecting supplies for distribution to relief agencies aiding victims. The University to Police Department is serving as a collection point for the following items. Bottled water, non-perishable food, batteries, hand sanitizer, toilet paper, matches, blankets, formula and bottles, diapers, and pet food. Monetary donations can be made to the American Red Cross, Salvation Army, and Metro United Way. From Henryville, Bella Portero, The Horizon Newscast. For additional information about how to get involved, please visit the school's website at ius.edu backslash relief. Each year, IU Southeast hosts the International Festival, sponsored by the International Program and the Student Program Council. The festival featured food, dancing, and other activities from around the world. The International Festival is hosted each year to promote diverse cultures and study abroad opportunities for IUS students. Christina Smith, a former professor at IUS, expresses how study abroad changed her life. The experience for me studying in Salamanca, which was 1997, but it was life-changing. I mean, I wouldn't trade it for a thing. I used to be a homebody, never thought I would go anywhere, but um, I tried it out, went for two months, and fell in love. Many different cultures were represented at the International Festival. Each were expressed in different ways, some through cuisine, others through song and dance. All proceeds from the International Festival benefit the IU Southeast Overseas Study Scholarship Fund. If you would like more information about the International Festival, Study Abroad Opportunities, or the IUS Overseas Study Scholarship Fund, call 812-941-2190. In the SGA's March 8th meeting, 
Interim Vice Chancellor Anne Scoos discussed IUS enrollment trends. Scoos said that the university is shifting its focus towards student retainment and plans to make that happen. The SGA also discussed creating a student ambassador program to represent each academic school. For further details on the meeting, check out this week's issue of the Horizon newspaper on Stands Now. For nearly 10 years, Stacey Lannert was sexually abused by her father. In honor of Women's History Month, the Student Program Council invited Lannert to share her experience with IUS students. Not only did she speak with IUS, but back in 2010, Stacey Lannert's story reached national attention on The Oprah Winfrey Show. After being sexually abused by her father for nearly 10 years, Lanard thought it would eventually end. But when the abuse turned to her sister, she couldn't take it anymore. I don't know how to end it. I don't know how to control it. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have all the resources that we have now. And out of desperation, I shot him. And he died. Lanard was charged with first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without parole. After being in prison for 18 years, Missouri Governor Matt Blunt commuted Stacy's sentence. Six days after the paperwork was filed, she was a free woman. She now travels to different states, empowering other women about sexual abuse and inspires others of what she has overcome. I am amazed that she is as strong as she is. And hearing her, I feel that she, is, that she has healed. You know, she has faith that has helped her to heal, as well as she talked about going through therapy. And I really believe, like, she is at peace. Stacy also runs a nonprofit organization called Healing Sisters, where abuse victims can come together, share their experiences, and offer advice to one another to help overcome their abuse. From the University Center, I'm Jonathan Cates, The Horizon Newscast. If you would like to learn more about Lannert's organization, go to HealingSisters.org. In IUS sports news, the softball team improved their record to 9-1 after going 3-1 in the Grenadier Classic. Raymond Shutt tells us more about the tournament. The IUS softball team hosted its own Grenadier Classic in which six teams from around the region came to compete. The tournament was held on Friday and Saturday and the Grenadiers faced off against Indiana Tech for the tournament championship. Todd Buckingham believes that batting was the team's strongest asset of this weekend. Uh, you know, we, we scored 17 runs in one game against a, a team, uh, won another game 6-5 to five in the bottom of the seventh, you know, scored five runs here against a good pitching staff. So, you know, I thought our hitting uh, was uh, top-notch this weekend. Senior Ali Alford not only had the Grenadiers' first home run of the season, but also went on to complete the cycle, which is hitting for a single, double, triple, and a home run in one game. Freshman Kara McGeorge went on in the championship game to start rallies in the fourth and the fifth innings to help the Lady Grenadiers take home the championship with a final score of 5-3. to three. I'm Raymond Shutt with Horizon. The ladies return home on March 31st for a doubleheader against Aquinas College. Thank you for watching the Horizon newscast. Tune in April 2nd for more coverage of all things IU Southeast. Again, I'm Morgan Tedesco. Have a great week and a happy, safe spring break.